We don't give up because it's hard. We give up because we get discouraged. And so we have to make sure we overcome discouragement. As a creative person, as an artist, you have to make sure you tune out distractions. Distractions are the enemy of greatness. Live your vision and mission, which was to encourage and inspire as many people as possible, one person at a time. And that is what drove me then, and it's what drives me to this day. John Gordon, welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. Man, in episode one, you dropped a lot of tips about content creation strategies, um, and it was such a great episode. Talked about the power of why every content creator and entrepreneur should consider writing a book. But one of the most prevalent things we are facing right now in the world is really a mental health crisis, especially post-pandemic. There's so much negativity in the world. There's a lot of gravitational forces pulling us down that can lead us to getting discouraged. And one of the biggest challenges for any kind of entrepreneur, content creator, person that wants to package what they know in a book, anybody that's trying to do anything is going to experience the resistance. They're going to experience perhaps slow growth. They're going to experience the months or even years before the breakthrough, before seeing all that hard work paying off. So I'm so grateful you're here to help us with really overcoming discouragement. And you just wrote a new book, The One Truth, about elevating your mind, unlocking your power, and healing your soul. And even this idea of us being able to be in negative mindsets or even positive mindsets. And I'm excited to unpack this. And so, uh, John, for those that are just meeting you, you've written a lot of books, but what is the story behind The One Truth and this most recent message you've shared with the world. I feel like every book I've written and the work I've done over the years has led me to this moment to write this book, The One Truth, because so many are struggling with negativity, with fear, with stress. They're worrying all the time. And here's the deal. We are not meant to go through life feeling sad, discouraged, fearful, insecure, worried, and chronically stressed all the time. I believe so many people have been feeling that way. We've almost normalized it. And so now we accept it as normal, but it really isn't normal. It's okay. And I've been there and I've dealt with depression. I've dealt with anxiety. I've dealt with all of it. So I have no judgment when I say that. What I'm saying is it's not meant to be our normal state. We are meant to live life with power, with peace, with joy, with optimism, with hope, with belief, with creativity, with excitement and passion about what we're creating and what we're doing. So seeing so many people struggle, it's because they feel separate. They feel disconnected from themselves, from others. A team that is divided, that feels separate, is a weak team. A team that is united and connected is a powerful, strong team. It's the same way with us. When we feel disconnected, isolated, alone, fearful, anxious, we feel very weak. But when we feel connected, we feel one. We feel joy, we feel power, we feel peace. And everything comes down to oneness and separateness. And this is what the one truth is all about. Like when you feel connected to everyone and everything, you feel like you're most creative when you're feeling that way. When you're feeling sad, lonely, down, depressed, you're not very creative. And so this is about how we elevate our state of mind. We elevate the antenna of our brain because your brain literally is an antenna and we elevate that. And the more you do, you start to tune into more positive thoughts. You start to tune into more hope and optimism. You tune into this greater energy that, that fuels you and gives you this power to create as you are meant to create. And so this is what The One Truth is all about. And I'm so excited that it's coming out. But you know, going backwards, you're talking about struggling, talking about negativity, when I wrote The Energy Bus, it was rejected by over 30 publishers. And so I was told my dream is not going to happen. I was told to give up. So I had these new thoughts way back when about positivity that no one was talking about, talking about positive energy and all these kind of things. And it was very new that publishers didn't get it. Bookstores didn't get it. And yet I was ahead of my time. But I had this book that I thought would, would, would make an impact. But yet, rejected, rejected, rejected. John, your dream is not going to happen. Your goal is not going to happen. You just sold your businesses and you focused on this. And now it looks like you may have to go get a job. It was a terrifying time and a, and a fearful time and a scary time. But I kept believing, kept hoping, kept putting it out there. And I'll never forget when John Wally and Sons agreed to publish the book. And so it, it came out. They published it. No bookstores would carry it now, though. 
So now I have my dream. Yes, I published a book, but no bookstores would carry it. And so I went on a 28-city tour, paid for myself from city to city, sharing the message in the book. We had five people in one city, 10 people in another, 20 in another. The most people we had were 100 people in Des Moines, Iowa. They thought Jeff Gordon was coming, the race car driver. That's why they showed up. And I remember I got home and didn't know what the future held. But I knew that I gave my best. And I went out there and I was sharing the message and I was adding value and I was doing the work and I was putting my stuff out there. But I just had to stay positive. And I was struck with the belief, just do the work. Show up every day. Make a difference. Add value. Live your vision and mission, which was to encourage and inspire as many people as possible, one person at a time. And that is what drove me then. And it's what drives me to this day. Because that book did not become a bestseller for five years. Five years. That book has now sold over 3 million copies, actually. I got to update my bio. It sold over 3 million copies, and it impacts more people than ever now than it did years ago. And so I think I'm a great example for content creators because I dealt with so much adversity and rejection and at times pessimism and at times doubt. And there were moments that I wanted to give up. But your purpose must be greater than your challenges. Your mission is greater than all of the forces and all of the adversity that you face. And your optimism is a competitive advantage. And so the more we stay positive and we bring forth that optimism and belief in what we're doing, and we know why we're doing it. When you know your why, you'll know the way, and you won't let obstacles get in the way. And so the more you just continue to look forward, not backward. What am I creating today? What am I doing today to realize this big picture vision that I have? I call it telescope, microscope. Big picture vision, telescope, zoom focus, actions in the microscope. And every day I'm doing both on the journey. Because if I just focus on, on the microscope and I'm grinding every day, but I lose sight of the big picture, when things are not going well, I'm going to give up. And if I have the big picture, but I'm not zoom focusing, then I'm just living in fantasy land. I'm dreaming all the time, but I'm not taking actions. So I'm working hard, but I remember my purpose. I remember my vision. And that keeps me going through the tough times. And that's what I've done in the past. And even to this day, I continue to remind myself that of that on a daily basis. I think a lot of people can relate. Energy Bus, your 3 million copies sold book today, comes out 2006, 2007. You write it, you publish it. Rejected by 20 publishers. Five years until it becomes a bestseller. It sounds a lot like starting a new YouTube channel feeling rejected over and over again, and potentially months or even years until there's a breakthrough moment. And even as we build up our library of videos, it takes time for the videos to break out, but you didn't quit and you shared so many mindset um, and attitudes and actions that we could be taking in response to adversity, in response to slow growth. But one of the things inside of your new book, The One Truth, is the tune framework. So you've created four kind of steps that can really actually help us if we're particularly in this moment feeling kind of, you know, beat down and we want to build a stronger mindset to just have the endurance and resilience to uh, build a personal brand, build our online business, reach our goals. I want to hear about the tune framework, but I also want to encourage everybody to either pre-order or pick up a copy of the one truth. Of course, it'll be linked up in the show notes. But John, what is the tune framework? I love sharing this and I include it in, in the new book, The One Truth. And basically, this helps us elevate our state of mind. See, negative thoughts lower our state of mind. Negative thoughts separate us and make us feel weak and powerless. So think about negative thoughts that make you feel sad and discouraged and down. They're not very positive and they're not very uplifting. And often as we're going through turbulent times or challenges or getting rejected or not finding our audience or not feeling like our purpose is, is being valued or being shared with the world like we want it to be or received by the world, you can get down. And there are five Ds that will sabotage you. Five Ds. Doubt, distortion, which are negative thoughts and lies that will tell you things about yourself and your future that just aren't true. They'll tell you to give up. They'll say the future is hopeless. They'll say you don't have what it takes. They will tell you these things and they'll make you want to give up and they will discourage you. That's the third thing, discourage. We don't give up because it's hard. We give up because we get discouraged. And so we have to make sure we overcome discouragement. Fourth thing, distraction. So often as we're trying to build and create, we get distracted by things that don't matter and don't help us be our best as a creative person, as an artist. 
You have to make sure you tune out distractions. Distractions are the enemy of greatness, but thoughts will always come in and distract you. Life will try to distract you. I've written 28 books now, and I've written these books by getting up every single day when I'm writing in December. I write books in December, and I get up every morning, and I write first thing. I don't look at social media. I don't look at emails. If I do, I'm done. I can't write. I write first, and then once I'm done, then I will do what I want to do next, but I write first. I do what matters most. I do first things first, and that helps you be successful. And so tune out the distractions. And then finally, that 50 is divide. And the root word for the Greek word of anxious means to separate and divide. So when you feel anxious, you feel divided. You feel separate. What I say? Negative thoughts separate you. They disconnect you from your purpose, from your creativity, from God, from your true power, from your passion. They separate you. So how do we unite? How do we get back to oneness if you feel separate? So the whole goal is to get back to oneness where you'll find your power, peace, and joy. We tune into the positive. We tune into, I believe, the creator of the universe to become more one, right? More one. How do we do that? Trust and truth is the, is the T. Trust and truth. So tune stands for trust and truth. So we trust when we're feeling doubt. Every time you're feeling doubt, is this really going to work? Is this new video going to make it? Is my content good? Again, it's always good to evaluate, but don't, don't let it beat yourself up. And don't let it defeat you. But just when those doubts come in that you don't have what it takes, you ask other people, hey, do I, do I have some talent? Do you, do you see that I can actually do some good videos? And most often you can. Most often everyone has potential that they can get better, they can improve. And so when those doubts come in, keep working, keep improving, keep trusting as you're doing the work. So that's trust. And then truth. Speak truth to the lies every time those lies come in. And the best advice I ever heard is from Dr. James Gills. He's the only person on the planet to complete six double Ironman triathlons. That's a double Ironman, which means you do an Ironman, a day later do another one. And the last time he did it, he was 59 years old. And he was asked how he did it. He said this, I've learned to talk to myself instead of listen to myself. That's the key here. Instead of listening to those negative thoughts that are always coming in, talk to yourself with words of encouragement, words of belief, words with hope and optimism. Talk to yourself. Don't listen to the negative thoughts. And when I'm working with professional athletes, and again, they are at the highest level of their craft, I ask them, do your negative thoughts come from you? And they're always like, yeah, of course they're in my head. But here's the next question. If you believe your negative thoughts come from you, who would ever choose to have a negative thought? So when I say don't listen to yourself, it's not really yourself. Those negative thoughts are coming in like a nightmare. When you're having a nightmare and a bad dream, are you choosing those thoughts? No. They're always coming in. Don't believe the lies that they tell. Speak truth to the lies and trust. That brings us to you. Unite with the love. And I'll get to that in a second. Unite with love. And neutralize the negativity. So often that negativity comes in. Gandhi said, I will not let anyone walk through my mind with their dirty feet. Do not let anyone walk through your mind with their dirty feet and don't let any negative thoughts walk through your mind with their dirty feet. Neutralize the negativity. On the left side of a piece of paper, you write down those negative thoughts that often come in for you. On the right side, write down the words of encouragement that you will say to speak truth to those lies that we talked about just earlier and write down those words and then practice that on a daily basis. The more you do, the more you practice this, you will neutralize the negativity. My wife will often, and you know my wife, Sean, when those negative thoughts come in, she will say, stop. And she will then start speaking words of encouragement, words of life. The word encourage means to put courage into. And so when you're encouraging yourself, you're putting courage into yourself. And when you encourage others, you're putting courage into them. That brings us to E, elevate your thinking. How do we elevate our thinking? Research shows you can't be stressed and thankful at the same time. So when you appreciate you elevate. You're literally elevating your mind and your antenna when you practice gratitude. I'm convinced abundance flows into your life when gratitude flows out of your heart. You want to be more creative? Practice gratitude. Be grateful and you'll get more things to be grateful about. Just try it. Take a walk of gratitude every single day. You'll be amazed at how many ideas come to you on these walks. It's essential. How do we elevate our mind? Go to bed as success every night. What's the one thing that 
went great that day, the one thing you're proud of, the one thing that made you smile. Don't go to bed thinking of all the bad things because you'll replay that over and over again in your mind while you're sleeping, the subconscious. Instead, talk about your success, the one great thing. What happens? You go to bed a success, you wake up a success, you're ready to take on the day rather than thinking it was a bad day. So this is key, elevate your thinking. And then back to unite with love, the greatest, most powerful way to think, the most powerful force in the universe is love. Unite with love. Fear divides. Fear separates, and it gives rise to all the negative thoughts. Love is the antidote to fear. Love casts out fear. And so the minute you focus on love, fear dissipates. When I was writing The Carpenter, people say it's my, my best book. It's about being a carpenter, a craftsman in a world of carpenters. It's about working and being amazing in your craft, excellent in your craft. So I, I just love this book, but I, I was stuck when I was writing it. And as I'm stuck, I never had writer's block before, but I had it this time. I go to bed, can't write this book. I'm struggling. I wonder if I'm ever going to write it. And I wake up with the idea and the thought that love casts out fear. I'm like, it makes so much sense. All I got to do is love the reader. That's what I did when I wrote The Energy Bus. Love the process of writing. If you love the process, you will love what the process produces. And love even the struggles that come my way because they'll make me stronger. So love all of it. The minute I did that, I wrote that book in two and a half weeks of divine inspiration. I wove it into the story where the main character is trying to build his business, a social media company with his wife, and they struggle with fear. And he's got to learn to then bring love to the equation. The book's about loving, serving, and caring, the greatest success principles of all. And I wrote that book out of love. And that's what will happen to you when you focus on love instead of fear. So anytime you start to feel fearful, focus on loving, creating loving the content, loving the process of what you're doing. And the minute you do, you're not worried about the outcome. Now you're focused on the moment. You become one with the moment. We call that the zone in sports. It's also in the creative process. You get into that zone. If you love it, you will create something amazing. You will create a masterpiece. If you don't love it, you'll never be great at it. So bring love to it. Unite with love. Tune, trust in truth. Unite with love. Neutralize the negativity. Elevate your thinking. You literally elevate your state of mind. I guarantee people apply this and do it every day. You will be the most creative you've ever been. I will get emails, which is like, which is what happens to me often. I get emails all the time saying, I'm doing my best work. I just created this. And you'll be saying, thank you, John. And I'm not taking credit. I'm not saying that in an arrogant way. I'm, take, I'm saying it because I know it's going to impact you in such amazing ways. And I can't wait to hear what you create by applying the tune methodology. I want to invite you guys to our YouTube 1K challenge. You can join this challenge for free as we show you how to grow your first 1,000 subscribers and make your first $1,000 on YouTube. We've had countless people join us during this 1K challenge who are now at 1,000 subscribers and past 1,000 subscribers making money on YouTube. And you could be the next person. If you just go to 2.1kchallenge.com, you can sign up for the very next challenge and we can't wait to see you guys there. This is one of those episodes to save and repeat as John just broke down the tune framework, T, trust in truth, you unite with love and neutralize the negative and E, elevate your thinking. I was like a fire hose of value. And, you know, this is one of the greatest occupations, I would say, of the content creator, knowledge workers. Being a knowledge worker means that you need to tap you need to get out of your brain outputs. You're trying to get creativity out of your brain, out of your heart, out of your spirit. And if you're tuned into the wrong channel or you're blocked or you're in a state of discouragement, it's going to be very hard to do your best work and do your highest level of craft. So man, so powerful to use that framework. One of the things I've heard you say as you were teaching this is that your certainty needs to be greater than your doubt. Can you expand on that? Yeah. Doubt's always going to come in. But your certainty in why you're here, in the work that you're doing, in the impact that you want to have, that has to be greater than all the negativity and doubt. You're always going to face negativity. You're always going to have critics. But guess what? We are here to create. We're not listening to the critics. We're not letting criticism in our head, and we're not letting praise go to our head. We're just here to do the work. And we know why we're here. We know the impact we want to have, and we know what we want to build. Like. What is your vision? What is it that you want to create? You first have to design it before you create it. So have this vision of what you want. And once you have that certainty of what you're here to build, it has to be greater 
than all the doubt that you face along the way. And I meet too many people that give up or don't have the certainty or don't have the faith. They don't have the trust. And guess what? They are more talented than me. They are more talented than a lot of people out there, but they didn't have the mindset to keep going. And that's why mindset is so essential to be successful because you have to withstand all the adversity, all the challenges. I have a formula for grit and grit is the number one predictor and factor of success. And this formula is essential. And it actually begins with, it's inspired by, by vision and purpose. It's fueled by optimism and faith. It, it, it's powered and driven by love. And at the end of the day, it's created from the inside out, knowing that we always create from the inside out. Your soul, your spirit, your passion, your joy, you're creating from the essence within you. Think about it. Everything we create, appearance is temporary. It's temporary. So it's, it's on a screen and then it's off a screen. Or at some point, we're living this life and that food I eat that I or that I just made, it's going to be eaten. We make a great bottle of wine, it's going to be drank. But essence is eternal. Essence is what lasts. So the love that you put into it and the essence you put into it, that's what lasts. So we'll remember the essence that you actually put into your content. That's what lasts forever. This is such powerful content. And I want you to imagine Think Media Podcast. What would happen on the other side of you tapping into your real essence, on the other side of you tapping into another level of love, of you neutralizing the negativity, of you elevating your thinking, of you tapping into trust and truth. I really believe that your best content is still in you. I believe that your best days are ahead and that all of us can benefit from John's work to put out better content that doesn't just build our businesses and build our followings and build our bank accounts, but impacts the world. These types of frameworks and this types of content is essential because mindset really is critical to then taking the action we need to take or injecting the content that we're creating with maybe that lower level of, of mindset. It's just not quite getting there. What happens when the videos you're going to make this week and next week have just another level of love in them, another level of energy in them, another level of positivity in them. John, you've added so much value to us. And I know that I think this is one of the episodes we want to re-listen to, but I also want to give you a chance to tell us a little bit about how we can pick up the one truth, but maybe a few of your other books. I know for me, Stay Positive is one of my favorites of yours that I like to just go through to just start the day off. The Coffee Bean was so powerful for me, and I shared it with our executive team with Nolan and with Kyle. And what I learned was that sometimes just sharing like a principle, they are like, okay, but I saw Nolan come to life. When I gave him the illustration, it because it's a it's an analogy, it's an illustration, it's sticky, it's memorable. And now whenever we say it, it sticks with us as a team. And so you have a lot of different things. So I would love for you to shout out some just different resources, maybe that are top of mind. We don't have time to go through all 28 of your book. Yeah. But we have some professionals here that have teams. We have some solo creators here. Some people that are just starting and maybe feeling a lot of discouragement. Some people that want to go to the next level. So tell us a little bit about your work. And we're going to summarize everything in the show notes and also how people can follow you. Yeah, I encourage people to definitely read The Energy Bus. I always say start there. The Carpenter will be something that you'll love as a creator. Training Camp is all about excellence. That's my favorite book that I've written is Training Camp. And then, you know, some of the some of the newer books, The Power of Positive Leadership. If you lead a team, I think that's an essential book to be a great leader. And we do trainings on that, leadership trainings all around the country. We develop thousands of leaders, actually tens of thousands now around the country and the world with this model of leadership. It's funny I say positive leadership, but I shouldn't have to say positive because if you are a leader, you must be positive and optimistic to create the future. And so really positively, it's like organic food. Like, should we just call it food? Why do we have to say organic food? It just should be food. That's a great book, Power of a Positive Team. If you have a team and you want them to be a stronger team, even a small creative team, I've had a lot of teams read this book together because it's the principles of practices that make great teams great. That will be really helpful as well. And then just Coffee Bean, you mentioned, my wife and I wrote a book called Relationship Grit. I wrote a book called Road the Boat with a football coach named PJ Fleck who transformed every program he's been in with his leadership and it's all about culture. So that's been a lot of fun. Soup is actually a great book from a standpoint of uh, the energy you put into it determines the quality of it. And it's all about building a culture of greatness. And then more recently that's coming out or has been out, 
by the time you watch this is The One Truth. And I believe this is my most important book. And this will help you get to a higher state of mind that will allow you to be more creative instead of a lower state of mind. Reading this book will help you connect more to oneness where you'll find more creativity, power, joy, and peace in your creation versus the negativity that separates you and makes you feel pessimistic and lowers your state of mind. And I explain it all and I really take you through how to do this. This is based on my work with all these professional athletes, with artists, with high, uh, you know, high, high organizational leaders. And it's incredible like the impact it's, it's having. That's why I knew I needed to write this book because these teachings are transformative and they're like nothing you've ever heard before. That's what I, I love about it. Like talking about the brain as an antenna helping you understand how to become one united team and why a relationship that has disconnection and division leads to mental health challenges. It all makes sense when you understand this. And so that's why I'm really excited about this book. And you can check it out at getonetruth.com, getonetruth.com. And we have a ton of free resources on there as well as the TUNE acronym. We have a one-sheeter on that. We have the whole one-sheeter as well, W-H-O-L-E, which is another action plan. And then we have another action plan on prayer, P-R-A-Y-E-R, -E that helps you actually renew your mind every day. And the more you renew it, you transform it, and you'll have more wisdom, more ideas coming to you. I got to tell you, we're talking about creativity and content, people. It's amazing how much more creative I've gotten over the years by doing what I share in this book and how tuning in every day makes you more creative. I never take credit for the ideas because I know they're not for me. Talk to the musicians that the jingle just came to them as they were basically sitting there. And next thing, next thing you know, they start writing down the music that came to them. There's gifts waiting for us. But if we're always tuning into the negative, you can't hear the voice or those gifts. So you got to be in a state to receive the gifts. And that's what we talk about in this book, how you can receive the gifts that are meant for you to be more creative. And I'm excited about how it's going to make you more creative. You know, I've never done this on the Think Media podcast before, but I do want to encourage you. A lot of times people are listening when they're on a commute or doing, you know, chores of some kind. But I want to encourage you to revisit this episode so you can dig into the show notes. And yeah, I really think there's two action items here. You know, one of the things I did was I went to Amazon and I purchased about 10 of your books kind of all at once. That's my style. I love That's the true. physical and I started to just kind of go through them. But we like to ask the question, you know, what is the main thing you need to do next? Is it a mindset thing for you? Is it your team needs encouragement? Is it growing as a leader? Is it improving your craft? When you've identified kind of perhaps the, the biggest pain point or challenge you're focusing on, then the, the answer, which one of John's book re reveals itself, plus um, there's the, the One Truth website and all of those things. So I want to encourage you to block some time or even set a reminder with Alexa or Siri and uh, come back to this episode and just kind of dig into the show notes. I can affirm, and I just want to acknowledge you, John, you know, from a distance before we ever got to meet, you know, we're in the wellspring together. Um, your work is so prolific and has impacted teams and leaders and made an impact on my life with like the energy bus and the power of positive leadership. But then more recently, as I dug uh, deeper and just kind of re literally ordered, I, I want to say I ordered 15 of your books all <laughs> at once. So he's like, you. what is happening? You know? And I was like, that's just, and I, and I love books. I'm probably a, a bibliophile or whatever they call them, a, bi a bibliomaniac, which is where you actually have an unhealthy obsession with books and it affects your personal relationships, <laughs> but in a positive way, I would argue. Um, and so uh, I'm just so grateful for the impact of your work and and know for sure that whether it's your your you know weekly tips on your newsletter or whatever, that we at Think Media Podcast will be better as we glean from all of these insights. And I can't wait. I know that at the time of recording, it hasn't even really hit the market yet. And uh, the one truth, I'm so excited to dig into that one. And I think you shared recently, even talking about Romans 12, do not be tr conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Just thinking about this tune framework, your prayer framework, man, to get in the right state every day and to become better craftsmen. And I actually purchased, but I haven't read The Carpenter yet. So that one's next for me oh, because I always want to go. And uh, we're throwing so much at people, but The Carpenter and the one you mentioned, the uh, training camp, because I think media want our craft, our content, our craft, always working on excellence, always working on the next level. How can we improve this podcast? How, how can we improve our videos? How can I improve um, you know, as a speaker, as a communicator. And so anyways, want to really acknowledge you and encourage 
um, you listening to this, take some time if you're on the move now to sit down and maybe plan out. We call it a PDP, a personal development plan. Plan out what book you're going to read next. Give yourself another hour or so to uh, check out some of the resources on the website that um, could take you a little bit deeper. And then allow this episode and more than that, John's frameworks to impact your morning routine, even starting tomorrow. What What is your, imagine what your future could look like, what your YouTube channel could look like on the other side of starting to get into getting tuned into the one truth and uh, going into a whole nother level of your mindset. John, so grateful for you and thank you for being with us on the Think Media podcast. Thanks, John. I appreciate you and, and thanks for mentioning the books. And I want people to know, I want people to read the books, not because I want them to buy a book. I want them to read it so they can benefit from it. And if they listen to it, if they buy it, if they get it at a library, it doesn't matter. I want you to benefit from the books and just love your community. I know that they're creative. I know they can get discouraged at times and feel dejected, but I think it's awesome that you are lifting them up. And I hope we did that today. So wishing everyone all the best and just know that I'm rooting for you. And if I can ever encourage you along the way, reach out to me because I do encourage people. And that's my, that's my mission, encourage people to keep doing what they're meant to do. And so I think this was just a perfect thing to be able to join Sean and reaching the community that you care so much about, Sean. So I'm thankful you asked me to do this.